This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, keeping you informed about the happenings in Annapolis and the area. Local news, local sports, local events, local opinion, and of course, local weather. The Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief starts now. Good morning. It's Monday, December 30th, 2019. This is John Frenet, and this is your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. On Friday, December 27th at about 2 p.m., Anne Arundel County police responded to the 1200 block of Gloria Avenue in Linthicum Heights for a standoff. Apparently, the caller had said that there was gunshots fired in the home and she had escaped safely. When police officers arrived, they were confronted by what they considered an extremely agitated adult male on the screened-in porch with a gun. The suspect did refuse to drop the gun and began to threaten officers and himself. A standoff ensued, a negotiation team came in, and for the next three hours were unsuccessful in getting the suspect to come out of the home. When negotiations failed, a SWAT team was called in to hopefully end the situation peacefully, and according to Sergeant Jackie Davis from the Anne Arundel County Police Department, the county SWAT team was busy with another call, and the FBI Baltimore SWAT team was called in as the backup. Davis did not know what the Anne Arundel County SWAT team was doing or what call they were on. At about 5 p.m., the suspect did fire his weapon multiple times, and both Anne Arundel County police officers as well as FBI agents fired their weapons. The suspect was declared dead at the scene. Currently, the suspect's body is at the office of the chief medical examiner in Baltimore for an autopsy, and until that is complete, we will not know whether the fatal shot was fired by an Anne Arundel County officer or an FBI agent. The incident is still being investigated, and we will update that as soon as we know a little bit more. The Annapolis Police Department is investigating sort of a bizarre assault and robbery that occurred on Christmas between 11 a.m. and noon. A man was walking on the area of President and Van Buren Street when he was approached by someone riding a bicycle. It was a male suspect. The suspect punched the victim in the head and then stole his wallet. The victim of the robbery did not report this incident to the police until December 26, however. Following up on a story we brought to you on Friday, Annapolis Alderman Dewan Gay was actually arrested for his open bench warrant on Friday afternoon. The Maryland State Police made the arrest at the Military Bowl, and Gay made it very easy because he was posting pictures of him having a good time at the Military Bowl with the mayor in a suite. Gay's attorney, Scott McMullen, says it's all been resolved and that Gay looks forward to his hearing on the traffic violation in April. This all stems from an incident when Gay was pulled over for speeding 91 miles per hour in a 65 mile per hour zone. He was charged with driving with a suspended license at that time, negligent driving as well as speeding, and he failed to show for his court hearing on that. Gay had also had a bench warrant issued against him in March of 2018, also for driving on a suspended license. He failed to show for that hearing as well. Gay has said that he was unaware of the bench warrants and he is taking care of the situation now as it stands. Speaking of the military bowl, the North Carolina Tar Heels beat the Temple Owls 55-13. to Yes, it was an embarrassing game for this Temple alum here, but it was the 2019 military bowl presented by Northrop Grumman at Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium, and it actually was a very fun day. The Tar Heels were led by freshman quarterback Sam Howell, who completed 25 passes for 294 yards and three touchdowns. The game itself set a military bowl record for the most points scored in a military bowl and also tied the 2017 Navy routing of Virginia for the point spread. Navy beat Virginia 49-7, so there was a 42-point spread there as there was in this game. Prior to the bowl, there was, of course, the military bowl parade that got underway at City Dock at about 9 a.m. It was a great parade. There were thousands lining the street. Of course, the Budweiser Clydesdales brought to us by Catsup Brothers were the hit of the parade with Larry Hogan, governor of Maryland, riding atop the wagon. We also had eight Medal of Honor recipients as well as Miss America in the parade and a number of other units and marching bands from North Carolina as well as Temple. All in all, there were more than 70 units participating, and it was a great morning for a parade a tailgate, and the military bowl. Here's a real feel-good story. It's a little bit delayed. We just got notice of it from the sheriff's office from Anne Arundel County. But back on Saturday, December 7th, in the afternoon, two sheriff's deputies were working a secondary job at the Arundel Mills Mall when they were called for a disturbance inside Skechers. They rushed to it, and Deputy Blucher and Deputy Schwab found a frantic mother yelling for help as her two-year-old daughter appeared to be unconscious. People said that they saw the girl choking on something prior to her losing consciousness, and without hesitation, the deputies picked up the girl, placed her down, and began performing the infant Heimlich maneuver. While performing the procedure, the little girl did spit up on the floor and began gasping for breath. Soon after, she began breathing normally, regained her color, and was reaching for her parents. 
EMS arrived shortly thereafter, and the two-year-old was taken to a hospital for further observation. She is doing fine, had a wonderful Christmas, and boy, thanks for the quick thinking of Deputy Blucher and Deputy Schwab for saving the life of a two-year-old. The two deputies have more than eight years of service to the Arundel Mills Mall and 12 years of service to Anne Arundel County through the Sheriff's Office. Always good to hear good news. Hey, if you bought some live Christmas trees, wreaths, or garlands, you need to get rid of them. Here's what you need to know to get rid of them at Curbside in Anne Arundel County and the Annapolis City. Yes, they can just be put out at the curb at your regular trash days. If your tree is six foot or taller, you should cut it in half. But they will accept natural garland, Christmas wreaths, Christmas trees, because they can all be chipped and mulched and repurposed. That is about it for the top news today. Please make sure you're checking out ionanapolis.net throughout the day because we do update it throughout the day. We never know what's coming down the pike. It is Monday, and normally we would have a Monday Money Report, but Anne from Covington, Alcina, is taking a few days off, and she'll be back with us again next week. But we do have George Young with your local DMV weather forecast, and he is coming up in just one minute. Hey, Annapolis, Eastern Shore, and Anne Arundel County. My name is Rick Peters, and I'm the president of Solar Energy Services. Business is good in the solar industry, and we're currently hiring and training new installers. We also need experienced project managers and drafting specialists to help meet demand and bring clean, renewable energy to homes and businesses in Maryland and Washington, D.C. After 40 years, we can attest to the fact that there's never been a better time to join the solar workforce than right now, especially at Solar Energy Services, where our on-the-job training will allow for rapid advancement for fast learners and emerging leaders. We're locally owned and operated. We have a great work environment and we offer competitive pay and benefits. And we like to hire for the long term because we believe our employees are our greatest assets. So be sure to apply today at solarsaves.net or call 410-923-6090 because sunshine's a wasting. Sunshine, sunshine, nothing else can make me feel so fine. Going out? You need the most up-to-date local weather. Here's George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis with today's forecast. Hey everyone, this is George with DMV Weather and this is your Eye on Annapolis forecast for Monday, December 30th. Yesterday was a return to gray wet conditions across the Annapolis region and today will bring more of the same, though temps will be up in the 60 plus degree range as low pressure to the northwest draws warmer air up from the south. Then skies will clear tomorrow for the last day of 2019, but airflow will come in from the west and therefore temps will be cooler as a result with sunny highs Tuesday in the 50s, which is still 5 to 10 degrees above average for the date. Then comes Wednesday and the first day of 2020 and the the expectation is for more sunshine with temps in the 40s for highs ahead of more sun and highs near 50 on Thursday before the first rain chances of the new year move into the region on Friday, though the outlook for the weekend is for sunshine and 50s, which should get everyone a great chance to get out and about and enjoy the first weekend of the new decade. Okay, that's it for today. This is George Young of DMV Weather. Make it a great day out there and be sure to get our free app on all of your devices by searching for DC MDVA Weather in the Apple or Google App Stores. And also follow us on Facebook and Twitter and on our website at dmvweather.com so you can always stay weather informed. Hello, friends. This is Brian Griffiths from RedMaryland.com, inviting you to the 2020 RedMaryland.com Leadership Conference, Saturday, January the 11th, 2020, at the Doubletree Hotel in Annapolis. Confirmed speakers include Congressman Andy Harris, Commerce Secretary Kelly Schultz, Transportation Secretary Pete Ron, Senator J.B. Jennings, Senator Steve Hershey, Senator Justin Reedy, Delegate Nick Kipke, Delegate Kathy Schlega, Delegate Lauren Arakan, WBAL Radio's Andrew Langer, and Jerry Rogers, Maryland Federation of Republican Women President Diana Waterman, Maryland Young Republicans Chairman Maria Sophia, Lauren Bogley from the Maryland Right to Life, and so much more. Tickets are available at redmarylandconference.com. Sponsorship opportunities and vendor tables are also available. That's redmarylandconference.com. Don't miss out on your opportunity to attend the redmaryland.com leadership conference Saturday, January the 11th in Annapolis. Once more, buy your tickets now at redmarylandconference.com. You've been listening to the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Tell your friends and colleagues this is the podcast where you can keep up on the latest with what's going on in Annapolis. 
and also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find even more information. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m., keeping you informed with the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. And take a moment to listen to our other podcast, The Maryland Crabs, released every Thursday at noon.